with that being said, obviously, plays here and there were the deciding factor in the game. We would love to be on the other side of it, but overall, I'm, I'm happy for our guys. I think we got something to build off. Thank you. Is that something like does that not come to second nature? Like how do you decide to slide or not slide? Because even the preseason you weren't really doing that. Yeah, you know what? It, it's ha finding a happy medium, being really understanding situations. Um, but I, I'm I'm a competitor, and I, I'm going to continue to kind of play the way I've always played since I was a kid. Um, but yes, you know, I think there's certain situations looking back on it in the game where I would love to have sled, especially on the turnover. Um, but at the end of the day, it's this kind of nature of the beast. You learn, you live, and you grow, and that's what I'm planning to do. Is it hard? Like, this might sound weird. Is it hard for you to slide? Like, is there a mental thing where you're like, no, you're not, hard? not really. I, I think um, over the course of my career, I've been tentative in sliding, and I think for me, I, I don't want to play that way. I don't want to play tentative. I want to play, um, you know, fast, and I want to be really just going out there and, and not worrying about anything. So um, if, it, if it comes naturally to slide, I will, um, but I'm not going to take away the competitiveness. You mean tentative to slide? What is that? What do you mean? Well, I think it's hard, right? Like, I think as a quarterback, you know, you get in positions where it's like, okay, do I slide to try to you know, avoid a hit, but then you're kind of in between a couple guys, and it, you end up taking a, a worse hit than maybe if you would have just played the play. Um, so, being understanding of those types of situations, I think sometimes you expose yourself sliding, especially in a crowded kind of area. So, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's necessarily something that I think about on the field. It's just something that happens naturally. How did you feel about the rushing yards total that you had? I mean, were you kind of surprised after not starting for so long, or did you know, like, yeah, I still got it? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I, I really don't even think of and pay attention to stats like that. I um, really am more focused on winning the game. And um, if, if that's what calls in that type of game for me to rush for that many yards to allow us to win, then yes, I'm all about it. But I really could care less about those types of things. One of the things that you had talked about a lot in training camp, you kept saying play free, and that was kind of the goal that you wanted to get to. Do you feel like you're at least close to that, or do you feel like you're playing free? Yeah, I would say I, playing that way. Um, and, it, and it feels good, really, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I, I think for me, I've always been kind of a feel and instinct player. And, you know, when I'm able to not think about certain things out on the field, I play better. So uh, I appreciate the staff. I appreciate these guys for allowing me to get to that point. Um, and I think that's what's going to allow me to play my best football. What do you feel like the difference is to get you to that point? I think there's a lot of things. I think it's changing up maybe a little bit of my preparation. Uh, maybe it's also, uh, you know, going through things mentally over and over again. Um, because it allows me the opportunity to just go out there and understand where guys are, where, where the spaces are, so that I can just go out there and, and play. How impressed were you with your offensive line on Sunday? They were great. They were great. And, um, you know, I'm happy for these guys. We've got a, a great group of guys. And that's expectation. That's the standard we're going to hold these guys to. Um, but it's also on me. You know, if I'm not holding the ball, if I'm getting the ball out quick, um, if I'm avoiding sacks, you know, I'm helping those guys out front too. What challenges uh, just facing the defending Super Bowl champs are you to bring to this well, you look at their defense, right? They've got three levels of all pro players, right? You got a guy in the front seven, you got another guy in the intermediate, and you got a guy in the back end. Um, so I think that's a great challenge, especially for this team who is young and who's kind of still learning the ropes of this league. Because um, that's what it is. Week in and week out, you're going to play some of the best players in the world. Um, and you just got to look at it as a great opportunity. And I'm excited for our guys. We're going to compete. Um, you know, we'll see see where that takes us. Compared to other locker rooms, I don't remember there ever being a ping pong table or a basketball net in this locker room. I mean, do you feel like there's more fun? I don't know, more fun or young energy in it? I don't know. I, I think guys are close, and that's what it's been fun for me. Um, when you've been playing this league for a long time, sometimes some of these locker rooms aren't that way, and it's not very fun to come to work. We got a great group of guys, like I said. When you're able to hang out, you know, when you're finished with meetings, the guys are still out here playing basketball or doing ping pong. Um, that says a lot about the character of this group. 
And I'm excited to play with these guys. I'll fight for them. I'll do whatever I can to help these guys win. And um, you know, I think that's kind of the same token all the way across the room. What's been the biggest point of emphasis in trying to get better offensively? Is it the red zone or is it third down? What's been the thing that you guys have talked about the last couple? Definitely being more efficient on third down in the red zone. Um, in this league, you go 50% in the red zone. That's not going to win games. You know, and if you're under 40% on third down, that's not going to do very well either. So, if we can find ways to, to get in a rhythm, get some third downs going, convert, score some touchdowns, uh, I think we can be even more uh, potent. <laughs> um, I, for me, uh, he's just got such a great feel for a receiver. Um, you know, football is an imperfect game, and I think when you are out there, sometimes you got to change kind of a route stem. You have to be able to kind of feel space, and he's got such a natural feel for that, um, which I think allowed him to get open in some of his routes and, and create some yak. And, um, you know, with that being said, we got to continue to find ways to get in the ball so he continues to feel that because I think he's so young, he's still kind of learning how to use those types of traits. Um, but again, when, when you have a guy with that physical gifts and he can kind of have some of those natural abilities to get open, um, he's going to do a lot of good things for us. Did you know that he necessarily had that going into Sunday, or was that one of the things that you learned about him? Uh, I thought I think for us, looking at back on it through camp and OTAs, we you always think people have certain traits. It's always different once you get into a game, and to see him do that in a live setting, I think is uh, very exciting for us. Marcus, I know that Arthur talks a lot to y'all globally, not in, not in context of this week, but overall about dealing with failure. How important has that message been to you in terms of the proper way to deal with failure? Very important. Uh, I've in my career, I've always dealt with maybe a fear of failure. Um, where I come from, you know, I, I always try to hold myself to a higher standard, and um, sometimes that that creates some of this perfectionist in you. And I, I've always found that that's when I start to think out on the football field. And I don't play naturally. I don't allow my instincts to take over. Um, so, with that being said, I think Art does a great job of portraying those messages to us, and it's something that, for me, really hits home. Is that something he's always talked about, or is that you notice it more now in this role as a head coach than maybe when he was the OC? I would say I notice it more now, I think, because he has command of the entire he's room. He's in front of the room. Exactly. Um, so it, it's pretty cool to hear some of his messages, but I definitely relate with a lot of it. With high achievers and a high-profile sport, it seems like talking about failure a lot might be a message that you know, falls on deaf ears. Do you think that that's the case, or do you think that you guys understand it maybe better than other people? I think, I, like you said, I think guys understand it a little bit better than maybe other people do. Um, because I, I think you, in this profession, you're all going to experience some sort of failure. Might not be to the extent of some other guys, you know, getting benched or getting hurt or, you know, getting out of the league. But um, at some point in time, any one of us is going to deal with that. And with that being said, to be able to know that you have other guys that are going through that and that you can communicate with and you know, ask for advice, I think is important. And Art does a great job of being able to bring those messages into the team room. So you guys feel comfortable when they come in here and they can talk about those types of things. And does it help coming off losses, you know, when, when, when you understand that, you know? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And I, I think when it comes to the league, right, it's the nature of the beast. Week in and week out, yeah. it's such a roller coaster of emotions. And I think some of these young guys are starting to understand that, you know, you can't get too high when you win and you can't get too low when you lose. And it's just got to be kind of an even, consistent, state of emotions throughout the season. Um, so I, I think guys understand it, and I think Art has done a great job of bringing those types of conversations to the team. With these next two games on the West Coast, it's going to be easier for friends and family to catch these games than making a trip to Atlanta? Yes, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun to play on the West Coast, um, see a lot of friends and families. It'll be fun to play in the Northwest. Um, you know, I haven't played up there since I left college, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some family and friends. What kinds of things can you guys do differently in the red zone to be more effective? It starts first and second down, really. Um, you know, if you get behind the eight ball and you're, you're getting third downs from longer distances, especially in the red zone, it's tough because the defense doesn't really have a vertical threat. Um, and at the same time, I, I think penalties kind of hurt us in turnovers. So uh, those are all things that are very controllable for us, and I, I think we can correct those things over the course of this week. Do you have any wagers in this locker room on the BYU and Oregon game? I'm going to have to talk to a couple guys. <laughs> uh, it'll be a fun game. I'm looking forward to it.